New World is a brand new, exciting MMO from Amazon Game Studios, set in the mysterious island Eternum. With the game's launch set for September 28th, I'm here to help you get settled in and ready for the dramatic conquesting and experience that New World has to offer. Forewarning, this guide is formulated off of first and second hand experience of playing the beta. These items are subject to change in the final game's release, but you should definitely have a head start with the information provided. The starting locations for where you'll spawn in at New World consist of four areas, First Light, Monarch's Bluff, Windsward, and Everfall. Spawning into these areas will prompt you with beginner quests that require learning the basics of combat, gathering, and crafting. These missions are very straightforward and do a good job of introducing you to your inventory. By default, you can carry up to 200 kilograms of materials with the option to expand in the future as you level up. Separate to this is your equip load. I'll simplify it like this. Light Armor offers the best mobility and highest damage bonus, but offers the least protection against physical and elemental attacks. Normal Armor offers more protection than Light, but compromises the damage bonus and mobility that Light Armor offers. Heavy Armor offers the most protection, but sacrifices the damage bonus for increased blocking and crowd control buffs. It also has the worst mobility of the three types. So whether you're trying to be flashy or effective in stats, be sure to note that the armor you equip is watermarked to your character. This will allow higher gear score items to drop when you're completing quests, which in turn provides more value to you. And if you're not using the gear anyways, you can always salvage them for repair parts or sell them on the market. Gear comes in ranges of five tiers. These tiers have level requirements and with each tier comes new perks or availabilities for gem slots. New World doesn't offer classes the same way traditional MMOs do. Instead, there are five main attributes your character can acquire. Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Focus, and Constitution. These attributes affect your proficiency with your weapon's base stats. For example, leveling up your strength increases the damage you would deal with a straight sword, or leveling up constitution increases your health. However, you are able to use any weapon combination you would like. Here are the weapons that are scaled with each attribute. Although at lower levels you're kind of stuck with what's in your attributes, don't be afraid to make combinations that seemingly don't go well together. As you level up, gems will provide accessibility for weapons that would otherwise be outside of your attributes. This makes the possibility for very specific and unique builds. After becoming familiar with the basics of New World, you are sent to your first settlement. Settlements are the hubs of New World, and they offer tons of options towards upgrading and developing your character. Here you can craft, refine, and store items. You can also collect quests, pick a faction, and access the trading post to enter New World's economy, which will play an important role in companies or guilds. After entering your first settlement, you will be able to select a faction. There are only three, so choose wisely as this is bound to your character for 120 days. The Marauders are the warriors who love the thrill of the fight. The Syndicate are those in the conquest of knowledge, and the Covenant are those who strive to maintain hope. After selecting a faction, you will have access to PvP and the option to complete faction quests. These will provide faction tokens that you can use to purchase items through your faction. One important item are the runes that allow you to craft larger bags to increase your weight limit. There are two types of quests for factions, and they mirror the two types of combat New World has to offer, PvE quests and PvP quests. PvE quests are self-explanatory, and usually are in the realms of gathering items or defeating mobs. The PvP quests are quests that are meant to directly engage you with players from different factions. PvP quests are bound by the territory you are in, so dying or fast traveling will disable their progression. Be careful. To obtain PvP quests, you must first be flagged for PvP. You can only change these at settlements or safe areas. A good way to tell if someone is flagged for PvP is if their level icon is red. This will let you know they're flagged. And also, you can only PvP people outside of your faction. Sorry, no double agents here. So while you're roaming Eternum, be on the lookout for other flagged players, as they are a good source of weapon XP. The XP obtained from killing another player scales with their level and how long they've been outside of a settlement. Essentially, this prevents spawn camping as it doesn't provide the XP. Actually, yeah, it, it, still, it still happens. Also, just so you know, Amazon intended for PvP to be a competitive experience and not hold bars in the way of lower level players. They intended for players within 10 levels to be able to compete with each other. So don't just go thinking that because you're level 24 that you'll whoop the ass of someone level 15. You may be very surprised. This also means you can challenge players within 10 levels of you. So there is an incentive to challenge higher level players. 
Just don't be mad when you get jumped by the guy's four friends that were hiding. Oh god, we're already molding. So what happens if you encounter four players like that? Well, you're in luck. You can create your own group or company. Groups can have up to five players in them, and at least for expeditions, are not limited to the players in your own faction. Companies are the guilds of New World, and can have up to 100 members in them. However, players must be in your faction to be a part of them. Companies offer significant advantages over playing alone, as they have access to the company treasury, which houses all the gold members have contributed to it. This becomes more important, as companies are also the method towards claiming territories. At launch, all territories will be unclaimed, meaning no faction will own a territory. However, when the servers launch, the race is on. You can expect all the companies on a server to rush to meet the 100,000 gold requirement to claim the territory, and this is the same for all territories. Why is capturing a territory important? I'm glad you didn't ask! The company that claims a territory has the ability to set trading, crafting, and housing taxes for the settlement. This allows the economy of the settlement to funnel money into the company's treasury to be used at their disposal. This can be used to snowball capture other territories at launch, or to upgrade the existing settlement, fort, or provide buffs for faction members in the territory. In addition to that, the faction that owns the territory has decreased taxes for fast travel and commercial activities, as well as the ability to move materials from one territory to another claimed one. Moving items does cost gold, though. But how do you claim a territory? Simple. You go to the fort in the area and capture the point inside of it. You have to be flagged for PvP to enter the fort, so you may need to be prepared for a fight. So what if the territory is already claimed? Well, gear up laddie, it's time for war. To declare war, first the faction must increase their influence in the territory by completing faction missions. Once the territory is thrown into a state of conflict, you can then declare war on the faction holding the territory. The company that is chosen as Vanguard to lead the war is almost random. Though the company can increase their chances of being chosen by contributing more faction quests than competing companies. Crafting is one of the most fascinating components of New World and it does a good job at integrating the materials and skills you acquire while traveling Aeternum. Here's a list of all the skills you can level up. Yeah, there's a lot. As you level these up, you become more efficient at locating items, you also unlock new materials to gather and are also faster at gathering them. So let's provide an example of how the crafting, gathering, and refining is interwoven. To create a necklace, you need silver ingots and a cut gem. So first, you need to level up your mining to mine silver veins. Then, level up your smelting to refine the silver ingots. For the gem, you get these from chests, or by luck when mining. Then, to cut, you need to level up your stone cutting. Finally, you can go to an outfitting station to craft, and you need the jewel crafting skill leveled up to create the necklace you want. The better materials you have, the higher the gear score will be for the item being crafted. In summary, you need mining, smelting, stone cutting, and jewel crafting all leveled to craft this necklace. And in addition, you will need each of these stations leveled by the settlement to perform the task, so you may need to hop settlements to find the stations that are properly equipped to make these items. Or you just buy the necklace off the market. But don't get me wrong, the crafting is very well done and is fun to do. And in later levels, you will need this to make more specific equipment for your build. These are not as easily accessible on the market. Speaking of, the trading post is a very useful tool for crafters. Sell items you make but don't need to earn some gold back. You can also buy materials you need to craft. One cool thing is you can look at all the markets from the trading post to see where the cheapest items are for the most bang for buck. You can adjust this from the trading post menu. So let's talk about how to get the competitive edge with leveling when you first land in Eternum. After completing the initial quests, the rush to level 60 will be massive. One way to get ahead is by accepting the most quests you can complete and making a run for materials. Whenever you're in a settlement, you can set your fast travel point to the end within it. Then you can visit the town project board and select quests that you can complete to gain XP. Afterwards, you can accept faction quests and side quests in the town. After loading up on quests, clear your inventory as much as possible so you can gather resources on your journey. One effective way is by having a string of quests between settlements. That way you can level up even faster. Set up a camp at a neighboring settlement and begin your journey to quickly then respawn back to that settlement after the quests are complete. When you're done there, pick up more quests and fast travel back to your inn. Turn all of those in and begin again. This is an effective way to level up fast. Side quests and main quests will have the most rewards with Azoth and Gold and XP, but the main quests and side quests become more challenging over time. So be sure to pair them with the town board quest and faction quest to get a well-rounded leveling round. 
Pair these items with an interactive map for resources and you have an effective way to get ahead. Azoth is a valuable material in-game that has two main functionalities. The first is that it allows you to fast travel from one location to another. The amount of Azoth required depends on your weight limit and if your faction controls the territory. The second is for crafting. You can infuse Azoth with the equipment you make to give it a higher chance for perks or gem slots. This raises the overall gear score and is useful for crafting the best items you can make. As you level your character and craft better items, Azoth will be easier to attain. But here are the main ways you can get Azoth. Completing side quests and main quests, expeditions, corrupted breaches, drops from mobs that are level 20 or above, and gathering. This requires equipment that has a chance for Azoth drops. I would be conservative early game if you're a crafter, as Azoth will deplete quick. It may be more useful to level first so you can manage your Azoth better. That's up to you though. Azoth is not a tradable currency and the only way you can obtain it from other players is by trading vials of Azoth or purchasing it from the market, though these vials are pretty expensive in early game. There are several different ways you will encounter mobs in Eternum. Invasions, Expeditions, Corrupted Breaches, and Wildlife. Invasions are specific to a territory and it's a wave per wave horde of corrupted aimed at taking the fort. Expeditions are your dungeons of New World. Each are exciting areas that are fun to explore and level at. Corrupted Breaches are a good source for Azoth and are a smaller point of interest than Expeditions. And let's be honest, wildlife is something you will never encounter, because you never go outside. There are five types of mobs you will encounter in Eternum. Ancients, Corrupted, Angry Earth, The Lost, and The Beasts. Each of these have buffs and debuffs against certain attacks. Here's a nice little chart from NewWorldFans.com that shows where these are active. Housing is another cool functionality that settlements offer. You're able to have a house in any settlement regardless of which faction owns the territory. All that is required is that you have enough territory standing for the ability to purchase a home. You can also own up to three homes, and each of these comes with more storage, decorations, and the ability to fast travel to the home like an inn. Though the cooldown for the home is dependent on the type of home you purchase, the more expensive the home, the shorter the cooldown for fast travel. You can also furnish your home with trade skill items that will boost your gathering speed and luck in the territory. The home with the highest furnishing score also gets displayed to all of the players on the server in that settlement, which is a pretty cool way to show off your design skills. So why should you buy New World? New World is a beautiful MMO. It has so many gorgeous locations, wildlife, cities, and almost endless opportunities to explore. The best part about New World, though, is the immersion. The game brings back the feeling of a truly social MMO. Running through Eternum, you hear the sound of wildlife and players chopping down trees. You walk through settlements to discover a fleshed out town that has players with their own objectives, socializing and having fun. Most of all, playing this with friends establishes the sense of camaraderie we all long for in games and in life. Or, you can take a different route and find a nice place to fish, enjoying the isolation and the beauty that New World has to offer. The dynamic combat creates the MMO experience so many have been looking for, rather than the tempo cooldown experience you get from traditional MMOs. It truly is something special, and the grander scheme of companies and wars creates a living, breathing world that changes with the development of faction control. I hope you enjoy this game as much as I'm going to. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and maybe subscribe. More guides will be coming in the future. I'll see you in a turn.